And yeah, kind of, it's just weird, is what I'd say. That were you like, involved in the? Uh, I'll edit. I for the micron deal. I had one big project that was doing. The hell it was supposed to be doing with a bunch of little ones, and how so far that was the one right? I did. Over there. So, you know, um, doing it right, but yeah. not, not what I. Howdy. Yeah, I think we're ready to get started. Can we? Can you hear us? Yes. <clears throat> awesome. Thanks, Rob, for joining us. My apologies. My freezer and refrigerator broke, and today is the first day I can get them repaired. So, <laughs> seventy-two point five, but the generally below five psi. Gotcha. Hey, can you see the shared screen too? Yes. Awesome. Okay, well, welcome. I'm Jason Blaze, a building official from PDS, and uh, appreciate you guys showing up. And uh, we're recording the meeting. Every every public meeting now, we're recording, and they you know throw on YouTube for transparency so people can watch. But got a certificate for you all too. Just want to thank you for participating and, and being on the board. You know, it's, you guys do a lot of stuff for us, really. And there's some of you have been with us for a while. And <laughs> some that are new, but we appreciate your efforts, your time, you know, taken out to help us, you know, ask questions, look at what we're proposing, all that stuff, right? We we value your feedback. Um, 
So we're going to, I'm going to turn the meeting over to the chair, correct? Before before that, we got a nice script for you. Okay. We, we elected a new chair last last meeting, right? Yep, that's correct. So Eric's ready to roll, right? <laughs> One way or another, we're going to find out. All right. All right. Chair calls the meeting to order. It's August 29th at 1.34 p.m. Um, welcome and introductions. So that's... Thank you everybody for showing up to the meeting. No. Yeah, and then we'll do a roll call. And then Tiffany. roll call Tiffany. Andy Peterson. Present. Lily Johnson. Present. Ben Taylor. Present. Patrick Paul. Yes. Dennis Fox. Yes. William Irwin. And Eric Johnson. Present. Then uh, I'll mention the email documents and handouts to reference to that's presented to us here in the middle. Yeah, should be what three different ordinance proposals? Let's hand it up plus an so, agenda. City Code Title Nine, Chapter Seven A, Mechanical Code. City Code Title Nine, Chapter Seven B, Fuel Gas Code. City Code Title Nine, Chapter Four, Plumbing Code. Three proposed. All right. Chair reviews the following addendum items for the board meeting. Introductions. We already kind of did that. Okay. Uh, meeting minutes for May 29th, 2024. You can just run through the go ahead and run through the list. All right, so our previous meeting, uh, Jason reviewed the agenda items of the board meeting. Um, do I start out there or do I start handouts? Oh, no, back here. Oh, I apologize. Yeah, just read through the agenda items and then you'll go back to it. <clears throat> okay, so item minutes, minutes from May 29th, uh, proposed city code amendments, plumbing, fuel gas, fuel gas. PDS fee study, then other items for new business. Primary purpose of today's meeting is to review and discuss the draft ordinance of uh, amendments to the City Plumbing Mechanical Fuel Gas Codes. The City Plumbing Mechanical and Fuel Gas Code Board is charged with reviewing these draft ordinance amendment proposals and making a, making a recommendation to the City Council. And then I go through the previous minutes. Keep reading. Just keep reading down here. Okay. Keep the chair outlets the rules for the public meeting. Okay. Um, city team members shall present and the proposed changes to the city code. Uh, the, sit, the board may ask questions for clarifications from city team members regarding specific change proposals in question. Um, number three, the board shall hear any testimony from the public regarding the proposal in question. Each person wishing to testify shall have up to five minutes to do so. Uh, number four, the board shall deliberate, ask questions, and shall entertain motions from members as needed. Five, the final decision and recommendations of the board shall be based upon a roll call vote of the majority of the board members present at this meeting. The recommendation shall be forwarded to Boise City Council. Okay. Meeting minutes approved. The chair entertains a motion to approve or amend the meeting minutes from the last plumbing, mechanical, and fuel gas code board meeting held on May 29th, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. I'll second that motion. Who made the motion and the second? So we get so Dennis makes the motion. And then Ben made the seconds. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Right. City team members present proposed changes. Boise City team reviews proposed changes to the city code. Okay. All right, so I will kind of go do an over 
overview, but we got Chad, of course, our mechanical plumbing supervisor here for the technical aspect of it. There's not a there's not a lot of technical inputs in the proposed changes in these codes. You know, we have the motherboard meeting. We want to do plumbing first. So, um, planning development services a long time ago used to have code. We call it code enforcement. At the time, they changed their name to code compliance. Used to be in our department, but sometime I don't know how long ago it was kind of went away and went to the city clerk's office. Um, so they kind of got away from us. And we didn't really interact with them too much anymore. Um, but code compliance is now coming back to planning and That's starting on October 1st of this year. So mo a lot of these amendments that we have here is just getting language in here to align us with code compliance. <laughs> that way they're designated as helping us, you know, enforce code or if we need help on you know, problem projects or something, we can kind of pass it, pass them on to code compliance. That's kind of the, the future of what's going on here. So we've been meeting with code compliance two early meetings um, just to prepare for it and uh, getting kind of some policies in place. And, and well, I'm sure we'll be working with them more to get it aligned, but they don't officially come again to our department until October 1st. So we're just trying to work on getting ordinance changes, getting policies, getting cadence on meetings with them just so we get aligned. With them. So that's that's a big part of what you're seeing here. Can, so, I, can I ask a question? Yep, yep. So I may get the terminology wrong, but uh, you're saying that the enforcement, there is an enforcement team, it's just not, in this department, correct. Does that enforcement team currently have any jurisdiction on what we do here? Not really. So when they come over, are they coming up alongside or under? How is how does that work? It will be kind of their own section within PDS that will work with us. Yeah. Okay. okay. And they'll still have the same responsibilities that they have yep. currently. Yep. But they're going to take on more responsibilities to be able to support. Yep. Okay, correct. And it would be like an escalation thing. So if we, so we got somebody without permits or doing work without permits and they're not listening to us, they don't want to listen, they don't want to get their permits, we can't get anything, get them to budge, do anything, then we can escalate to code compliance and code compliance can step in and they can take it a little bit further. Okay, so currently right now, if somebody is out there doing stupid stuff mm -hmm. and your guys are saying you need to fix this, you need to fix it. They can basically say, nope, we're not going to do it. And you have no authority. In the end, we do have some authority, but it's it's hard for us to get it to the point of legal action without the code compliance. So you're not able to go, hey, code compliance over there. We need help. They're just like, yeah, we're we're currently that's the case. But okay. this brings it in to where we can use them. But Right now, if we've got a bad situation, we just work directly with our attorney's office. Okay. And so this would give an in-between between the attorney's office and, and us, so give us the code compliance aspect as well. All right. And a lot of them are like trained, you know, former, some are former police, some are, uh, you know, they just know the legalities of things and all the steps, they're pretty good at it. Like we had some trainings with them times. So, so what are the steps for, Say they they go out to a job that nobody's got a permit, whatever. Are they shutting the job down and legally? I think what you'll see is us or something like that first, just to say, hey, you need a permit, like we normally. Yeah, do. we're talking the cases that ignore us and the ones that are saying, yeah, that we actually have proof of work without permit. Do, does it uh, help us with some of like the? Handyman guys. Yep. Okay. okay. Yep. Good. Yep. So are, it's not a ton of them, but there's some. Out yeah, there. it doesn't seem like it's Most as big people. as it used to be. But I used to run into that all the time, where you know, it's like, oh, my handyman said that he'd just do that. Yeah. No, you need a permit for that. Yeah. And most people, when we engage them, they get a permit, we move on, and we do the work, and we're able to work through it. There's just a mm -hmm. small percentage once in a while where they just. And it's not necessarily contractors 
see sometimes it's homeowners they just right probably yeah. more homeowner based i would think the code compliance officers have the ability to go out and write citations whereas we do not okay and, and they can with the citation obviously there could be a misdemeanor fine it could be a civil just a civil penalty there it, or it could go no, as far civil, as court civil penalty or not civil penalties yeah. anymore. You're right. But we can issue misdemeanor fines and stuff like that through code compliance, which we can't as inspectors currently. Sure. If I'm correct, right? Yeah, we can in some not as common to just the yeah. code. So then these uh enforcement portion of it, they don't have the mechanical or plumbing background. They're more of the Legal background. legal background. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And, and so we would work directly with them. Like if I went out for, if I sent them out to a project for no mechanical permit, one of my mechanical inspectors or myself would go with them. So they have somebody that knows the, ex, the trade, has experience in the trade with them. Cool. Um, they're just there for the legal to do it. They know more of the legal process and to help give us some backing and some enforcement. Awesome. So are they more like on a city level or are they state level? They're city. The city. The city. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And they also, you know, help with zoning compliance. They do what the weeds and parking and yeah. RVs on the streets and that kind of stuff too. Does uh Garden City fall under uh Boise? No. Nope. So they have their own. The last paragraph talks about changing it from non notice of non compliance of building to a uh, notice of compliance, what's that require? Is there, is there a yeah. cost to the yep. client or customer? Or? Yeah, we'll go through that. Let's go through these. Um, they start at the top. So we have the title here, I think, and it's from the The first on the deputy section, as a code official is designated with the code, um, we have a section here just designating people that also have authority to carry out the code, right? Our plans examiners, our inspectors. And so we've had plans officers here. We didn't have plans examiners in there, so we went ahead and added that too. Such employees shall have such powers and authorities delegated by the director and or code official. So that we have the director over all our ordinances and the code official. And then in the case of plumbing, mechanical, you know, Chad helps fill that role. Um, so that the bit, the main thing is adding plans examiners here and adding code compliance in here as deputies, basically, so they can help us. That's what it was for. This, this language here. I'm going to be taking Chad's spot in two years. <laughs> <laughs> we love the party not. people. <laughs> so. so in this case, who is the code official? If it says the code official, who is that? So for mechanical fuel gas, it's Chad. Okay. Right? And then he has to work with our plumbing team for plumbing. Yeah. So I'm not the plumbing, I'm not the plumbing code official. I supervise the plumbing inspectors. There are code officials on the plumbing side. They have areas and they're kind of the code official for each of their areas. So okay. The so plumbing. That was one of my questions. Was it's it says uh the chief plumbing inspector. Uh, or chief, oh shit, I'm in the fuel gas. Um, <laughs> it talks about compliance um, plan examiners and code compliance officers. Is that inspectors, code compliance officers? No, that's the section we're talking about for code compliance. Okay. To, to deputize. It talks about assistant. You can uh, assign assistant plumbing inspectors, but who who can designate the plumbing inspector? Who designates the plumbing inspector? Like gives them power. Yeah, because we talk about the it talks about assistant plumbing inspectors and mechanical inspectors, but it doesn't say anything about just straight up non-assistant. Is there an, is there anything other than an assistant? Yeah, I think it's just they're saying because of the chief that you have assistant plumbing inspectors. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So all of the other inspectors are considered assistants. Yep. 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 All right. Cool. I just want to make sure I'm understanding it. I just. Yep. Okay, cool. Sorry for asking so many no, questions. No, 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 I'd rather you ask the questions <laughs> and then understand because it can be confusing. Yeah, and it's, you know, in Boise, we've had we've had a joint plumbing mechanical supervisor, then we split it out 
and we had a mechanical supervisor only in the plumbing, and now we're back to just a joint plumbing mechanical supervisor. So we've, yeah. we've had it different ways depending on the personnel and experience and stuff. So we're back to before we had more of a plumbing side supervisor that didn't know what mechanical leaves over the whole group. Now we have more of a mechanical help with them from the plumbing. So because there is crossover. There is, mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. crossover. Mm -hmm. We've tried it both ways. And then in the end, we kind of keep bouncing back and forth here and it seems to work better when they're together um, as a team. You know? Totally makes sense. Yeah. But it's just hard to get one supervisor with both plumbing licensing and mechanical licensing. It's almost impossible, right? So yeah. Yeah. together as a supervisor. So then coming down uh, to that uh, penalty section. That is where, yes, we've added these two paragraphs. Building division may respect the intelligent compliance officer, the designated director, and code official to gain compliance with this chapter of state code for non compliant cases. For unaddressed non compliant items at a building or site, the code official may record a notice of non compliance against the property with the Ada County Recorder's Office when compliance was later gained at the building or site through approval permitting an inspection process. The code official shall then record a notice of compliance against the property at the Ada County Recorder's Office, indicating the building or site now complies with this chapter of city code for the subject items. So we don't we don't do that a lot, but we do on occasion where people just won't listen. And we know we might have a hazardous thing or they're trying to sell the property. Flippers, house flippers. Mm -hmm. right? This gives us the ability to flag the title. So when they sell it, there's something on there. So there's something wrong. And it'll get flagged when they go sell it. So then they'll know. That's what usually happens. And then they call us and then they get permits. And then we open up areas, we inspect it. We approve it, and then we record a notice of compliance on the parcel that says, hey, this item was addressed and, and is now legal in compliance with city code. Well, there's your teeth right yep. there. Yep, 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 yep. yep. It, it works great for people who are flippers or buying and selling a lot. It doesn't work as great when people live in a home for 30 years. <laughs> but, but it'll still be flagged if they ever do go to sell the house. That, hey, there was work done here, something done here that's not in compliance with code. Mm. And that's just one option, right? Obviously there's other penalties that could be pursued. And if you get into code compliance and it's a life safety issue, they may just go to citation option or something. So that's just an option of, of part of the penalty. Are there any fees incurred between the notice of non-compliance to compliance, except other than the getting the permits and whatnot? And removing she rocks they may do or whatever that is. Yep. Okay. So that, yeah. Reinspection. So we create the uh, we create the documents and we record it and the county doesn't charge us as a city to are you talking about fees that the contractor incurs or the homeowner incurs or fees that the city has to pay? I was just curious if the legal team gets involved if somebody has to pay did, wants to buy a house and ends up having to pay city of boise's lawyers their fees to get it oh. back into a compliant state is it the only dollar change there is the permit yeah value just right gotcha i'm just not familiar with the notice non-compliance yeah and we um, recently we've done a trade that's been more on the building recently we did one on the building so it's like a fire pump, fire pump. It's not working. So, but that that happened to get a new buyer, and they saw that, and they're like, "We're going to fix it." Again, it's a good flag. Who wrote this? So we wrote it internally, and then we had a raw or uh, legal representative look at it. Do you think it's strong enough for the problems you're dealing with? It seems like it's a good 
mellow step forward, but it's something, right? Mm -hmm. Something's better than yep. almost nothing. <laughs> yep. Well, it's interesting that I mean, if you go back up here, yeah, they say in code. I mean, we can do misdemeanor citations, right? Which is could be up to a. How come those don't ever go through? Is that there's just no legal pathway to follow through with it, or what's the the times that I've been involved with citations? More than not, once a person gets a citation, then they're kind of willing to come work with us. Mm -hmm. So we usually pull it back if that does happen. We're willing to finally get compliance because all we care about is compliance, right? Getting the thing safe. But I don't know, Rob, do you want to chime in on that at all or have a comment? Or? Sure. Um, you know, usually I think they're better tools usually than Mr. Maynard's cit citations, uh, personally. But um, it's been pretty rare, though, for us to have to use a misdemeanor citation on. Um, on uh, any of the trades, uh, less so with the building division. We've definitely threatened those before, but um, but um, in terms, I mean, it's pretty unusual for, like I said, to file one, but usually when the one's filed, um, the prosecutor will go like, hey, get this fixed up like ASAP and, and we'll dismiss it. And so it's a good incentive to get people back on track. In the don't we, we start with a misdemeanor citation and then there is this option where you can get it down to an infraction, right? A $300 Correct. fine. Okay. So that's and another. I, I don't recall whether in the trades or not, but, you know, certainly in like um, some situations, you know, you can, you can cut gas and electrical uh, services. Um, mm -hmm. So. Having utilities as an option. So. If if we threaten to cut utilities, um, I've usually found that people, like ninety nine percent of people, will straighten up like almost immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, the most, especially in the winter. Yeah. Probably the most <laughs> yes. recent yes. Yeah. I can remember it's where a guy refused to stop work when we had to stop work. He was just like. Nope. Owner's telling me to continue work. I want to continue work. And we did cite him right on the spot there because he refused to stop. But of course, he came back, got his permit, did everything. And I think that one was Mr. Old. So I think the last question is why add an entity back in versus give Chad a little notebook that says notice no compliance? Boom. I can write this out. Like, what's the difference from you? Choosing that what options adding adding them coming in versus giving the I, I still think it's vectors. Gonna, I mean, it's still going to be our approach to hey, you need a permit and and nudge people along in the beginning with our teams. It's just going to I don't think code compliance is going to get involved until it's the ones that aren't. Is that can the inspectors not be code compliance people also? Is it just they don't know all the legalities? Um, so no, could they're they're be in trouble busy. where they don't. <laughs> You got spent you. a lot of time on these. Like I, my police inspector, supervisor, and I, we spent a lot of time on just non-compliant cases, and they're only a handful of what we really do. We spent an enormous amount of time on. So the time, the time thing will help us out too. If we can say, "Hey, can you help us out on the the ones where they're ignoring us or not doing anything, yeah. especially where we know we have a safety issue, right, on the field." Mm -hmm. And like to Jason's point, they know the legal side of things because most of them have some sort of law background. So they have the legal side of things down a lot better than me or many of my inspectors do. And makes when sense. it comes time to go into court, that makes a huge difference. You win or lose a case, you yep. gotta have that. Yes. yes. And they've and in you the guys... training they've showed us, they've shown us example after example where if this this and this wasn't lined up. That just adds more to you guys and you're already busy. So yeah. okay, yeah. I get you. Yep. Makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's even down to taking photos with timestamps and dates on them, which is a regular photo, right? That makes a difference in the case. So when there's an issue with, let's say I'm doing a job for whether it's residential or commercial, and I'm not playing by the rules and you're engaging me, mm -hmm. is there any point that you engage the home or building owner before you issue a non-compliance through the Ada County? 
Usually a big tacker. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We usually send a before we ever do that, we usually send a letter. It's got a 30-day notice that says, hey, we're going to do this if you don't comply by this date. And we usually send it to the contractor and up the owner. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we give kind of a, a kind of 30-day period to say, hey, last chance, right? Okay. Because, again, getting the teeth in it, I would think the building owner would go, what the heck? Right. You know? So... Right. right reaction yeah not, not always sometimes they don't care either <laughs> oh, really yeah okay yeah and this this particular one with the fire sprinklers they didn't care so yeah you know you just never know but you're right it's good to copy both it's a great it's a great point we need to accept each one of these separately or do we do all three at once yeah, yeah. and so i think all three of these are pretty much exactly the same right chad yeah they're all identical we didn't change anything uh, yeah. But before that, we have to open up for any public comment, right? Public testimony, see if there is any. We go ahead and say that out loud. <laughs> is there any public uh, testimony for these new addendums coming out um, on? Title IX, Chapter 7A, Mechanical Code. Title IX, Chapter 7B, Fuel Gas Code. And Title IX, Chapter 4, Plumbing Code. But he has shown to the meeting and we got no notification, correct, online. Okay. So no, no public testimony. No public testimony. Well, then you can do it Per se. Um, Chair asked the board to entertain motions for each proposal from its members to take one of the following actions. Um, action number one, the City of Boise Building Code Board of Appeals recommends that the Boise City Council approve and adopt the proposal, proposed ordinance addendums or the City of Boise Building Code Board of Appeals recommend that the Boise City Council approve and adopt the proposed ordinance of addendums uh, amendments with the following changes. Or the City of Boise Building Code Board of Appeals recommends that the Boise City Council deny the proposed ordinance amendments or the City of Boise Building Code Board of Appeals requests that the Boise City team set another date and time board meeting to discuss additional changes to the proposed ordinance amendments and rob before before that do you need a vote or a motion on each one or can they do all three under one motion i think this is um simple enough that you can do it all in one motion um and i'll just speak state, up if i think it starts to get messy just state each title and chapter Yes, that would be preferred. Okay. So the motion to approve and adopt uh, Title IX, Chapter 4, Plumbing Code, uh, ordinance and addendums, amendments, I should say. Do one at a time. Somebody, I think she said you could do them all in one as well. Oh, somebody makes the motion. It says each one in the motion. Who wants to talk for 10 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Motion to do all three addendums at once, amendments at once. I'll, I'll move that we accept uh, Title IX, Chapter 7A, Mechanical Code, proposed amendments, uh, the Title IX, Chapter 7B, Fuel Gas Code, proposed amendments, and the Title IX, Chapter 4, Plumbing Code, proposed amendments. I'll start um, as they are. Ben said the motion and uh, uh, Pat seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, guys. Okay. Hey, moving on. Move on. Move on to the um, moving on to PDS uh, fee study yes. that is currently underway. Yep. Thank you, Chair. 
So we have engaged any things very done to do a fee study for our whole planning development service, exclusive of housing. So mm -hmm. all the planning, all the building. Um, and they are just, we haven't done a fee, we haven't done a formal fee study like this since 2009, I think was the last one. Um, and I know our finance department's kind of been encouraging us to do it. So we've, we've done that, we've engaged them, been having meetings lately, and they were in town last week. Mm -hmm. And we had, in fact, in this room, we had three solid days of meetings with them. Pretty good. And, you know, showing them our fee schedules, showing them our financial, showing all kinds of process of what we do. So they're analyzing what we have. And then they're probably going to make proposals on tweaks, probably tweaks in different areas, process plus fee schedules. So. So I think we got our first virtual meeting to go over our fee schedule for plumbing mechanical fuel gas next Friday, right? Yep. So they kind of took a peek at it last week and we showed them where all our fee schedules were, but I think we're getting into detail when we go over it. So so we're gonna we've got that plan for next Friday, but also wanted to ask you guys, you know, look at our fee schedules or are there any issues you have with our fee schedules? This would be an opportunity to tweak if you feel we're out of line or something's not quite working or, and I bring that up because there's one area I know of our fee schedules where we're doing multifamily where I feel like sometimes we do fixtures, sometimes we do value. And I feel like I get a lot of refunds on that one <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because of the way it's set up, right? Right, and that's one of my proposed changes too, because currently our multifamily is set up to where the residential dwellings are permitted on a fixture count base, and all the common areas are permitted on an evaluation base. So you end up having to have two plumbing permits or two mechanical permits for the same building, and it gets really confusing. And then it's a pain point for the contractors and for us too, because then we got to make sure we're getting inspections called on the right permit for the right part of the building. Kind of like Jason says, we're constantly giving out refunds for that. So I propose that we go away from that model and just have one single permit based off of the fee of evaluation was what I suggested. So instead of having split the building into two pieces. So the that makes sense. When you want one way. Yeah. But now would that go across the board no matter on all? Permits. This just for mechanical plumbing is all I have. The I mean, whether it's multifamily, single family, or commercial. But this is specifically that change would specifically be for multifamily because that's the only one that's that way. And that would be more like what commercial? It'd be like identical to commercial. And only on the new construction side, not remodel or yeah, remodel still alteration permits, and they're based off of fixtures. So if you go on our web page. Over here on the right, you got fee schedules. You can go here and click mechanical, fuel gas, or plumbing. That's what you want me to bring up. It doesn't matter, they're identical for the most part. Other. So it would be good to look it over, um, go online. Um, and, you know, you guys pull permits through our system too. If there's any anything in this that would tweak it. I know we get talk about charging of ADUs at yeah. the rate to mm -hmm. across, you know, they're trying to do more reasonable costs for ADUs now. The smaller, was it 900 square feet or less? I think they are. What's an ADU? Uh, accessory Accessory dwelling unit. What's that? Like a they, garage, a little house uh, that uh, they put a living unit or either or above a garage. Or in a yeah. Sometimes, or just okay. Dwelling unit. A lot of that in the north end and northeast. That's it. Sweet. There's been an effort for more ADUs through zoning code. Mm -hmm. I think they got it up to 900 square feet now. It used to be 700. Um, mm -hmm. And then just regulating the fees at a lower tier for ADUs because they're so much smaller. Um, so that's been kind of a consideration too. I got a question on ADUs. Um, I, I've done a fair amount of them and. We had one in particular that had to have separate uh, metering for gas and water. Um, 
And would that be because they ended up running a separate sewer tap or was that just a one-off? This was a few years ago now, but seems like all the ones that we're doing now, everybody's utilizing their, their okay. house meter basically right. for their water and just branching off their gas. So there has been some battle, I'll say, not battle, but conversations with Veolia, because there for a while, Veolia was trying to mandate a separate service for okay. structure. Yeah. And so there was some that got done just to appease Veolia to yeah. get the process. But technically, the way our codes and ordinances are written, you can share off of this main dwelling if the pipe is sized Appropriately. Right. The water main would have to be big enough to supply the main house and the accessory. Domain. Right. Same thing with the sewer. Yeah. Uh, natural gas, we don't see too much in ADUs. When we do see them, usually it is a separate meter. Meter. Okay. And I think that's just off of, based off of it's easier to run a separate meter mm -hmm. than it is to it run try and a, trench over to trench over that up. House. Yeah. And then upsize the meter on your house because the meter on your house usually isn't big enough to handle exactly. The, and the house. So a lot of times the, the gas side, they choose to put in a separate service for yeah. gas. But most of the ADUs are all electric anyway. Yeah. Um, so, but there was a time there where Revealio was trying to force yeah. um, a separate service. But like I said, we've we've kind of put the kibosh on that. The only time that you were required to is if the lot can be split. If that accessory dwelling unit can be split off and sold separately, okay. then it has to have its own service. Absolutely. Okay. So that's the one exception to that. Cool. Yeah, I get people that ask a lot. So it, yeah. you know, it's like call the city because not a hundred percent sure because I've had one that went this way and one and right. a bunch that go the other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the the just a question here, the PDS fee study. Yep. Yeah. Is that going to be, you know, obviously we're going to be involved with the you know, plumbing, mechanical, and fuel gas. Yes. Is that fee study going across the whole board of the city of Boise? Uh, just planning and development. Planning so and development. And then <clears throat> are the fees, what is the purpose of the fees? Are you fully funded by these fees or do you actually have your budget come strictly from the fees or are you getting money? from taxes or other places what yeah, is it's a combination yeah yeah if you look at our department as a whole like planning department i think we don't make money or lose money building department we make more money but as a whole i think it makes it as a department and um, is the goal then for the fees to get you this department on its own making money or... I don't know that it is. There's kind of a standard. There's kind of a standard because they don't raise fees so high on the planning side when projects are more at risk, especially like big projects. Because if you had to pay like cost of service for planning, you would be much, much higher on the planning side. And then we'd probably lower them on the building side. You know what I mean? So there's a little bit of like that with the overall of the development for the whole department. I think there's kind of a standard model of this much cost recovery versus this much cost recovery in different the different uh, divisions. That's what they're analyzing. That's what they're going to look at. But they may make you know recommendations where some things go up, maybe some things go down, some things don't get charged. Or, you know, they're going to look at that. They look at it all, and they they do this across the country, so they're kind of. It doesn't mean we have to follow everything. It's a recommendation, right? It's a fee study recommendation. And they may give us options in there too. Say, hey, you might look at this option, or you might look at this option, or this option. But they may give us an option of full cost recovery too. But I just have a feeling that wouldn't be reality of what we would adopt. You know what I mean? Okay. So then the goal of the city is not to have the fees pay for the full amount of your department, or it might be overall the whole department but it might not be individually for each you know okay yeah and you got to think of things like certain permits like we want to keep relatively affordable like changing out a water heater right we want people getting permits to change out a water heater we want to do inspections we don't want to make those 500 bucks for a water heater permit, right i think what do we yeah. have about 55 55 dollars right now so we want to make those there's certain types of residential permits we want to maintain at a affordable rates. So we know people get permits, we get inspections, 
we may not make money on those, but we might, it might, the bigger developments might pick up some of the slack, you know what I mean? And overall, in the whole scheme of things, something like that. Will they show us that algorithm or is that the one on the board there? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could you explain that to us? <laughs> <Sweet dreams. laughs> I'm just curious how we make a choice because or decision. Cause like like Dennis said, like oh yeah, there's there's money coming in, there's money going out, there's money going this way, there's money going this way. Yeah. You know, yeah. versus comparing it to like another city, or it's like I don't yeah. know how to make that choice in an well, educated way. And we we fluctuate, right? I mean mm -hmm. It's not like we just have steady workload widgets the whole time, right? It's like big ones, small, nothing, big multifamily, right? We have lots of spikes. And so one one thought was too is to have like a reserve fund where we don't know that exact amount, but do we have like two million dollars or three million dollars in a reserve fund for the spikes of up and down? I but, want that too. <laughs> <laughs> something's you know to that nature of because you know. We're lucky here because mostly we've had ups and downs, but it's been a trend like this, right? Um, but, you know, back in 2008, it wasn't that way, right? We, have, we went to nothing. Yeah. Are you are you looking to expand? The, the like, for this group, staff, us? Yeah. Um, is that, we, yes, we, this we are. Part of that. Yeah. We feel like we're gonna need another plumbing inspector here in the next year, especially with yep. what's going on with Micron. Um, because uh, we have three, basically three plumbing inspectors covering the whole city right now. So we know we're gonna need another one at some point. And we're gonna have a plumbing inspector living at Micron here in the next six months to a year for like years, right? So yeah. we know. So I, I was kind of thinking that same route. You've got like St. Luke's, Micron, yep. and yep. Uh, Meta. Yep. Those three just by themselves are yes. going to deplete. Well, is Meta in your Meta. Okay, so just those two then, City, uh, yep. you know, that's going to deplete a lot of your resources along yep. with everybody in this room. Correct. Do the fees that those projects are paying offset the cost of having that? Yeah, that's what yep. they have to look at for sure. Yep. Okay. And I think, are we good on mechanical for now? Mechanical, we're good for now. So we're not looking to expand on the mechanical inspectors, but plumbing for sure in the next year. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And we know with code compliance coming over, we know code compliance is going to need another version too. Because they're taking what are they're already doing right now, and now they're getting into PDS, you're going to get more, right? So, you know, they're going to need, they're going to need one there too. Are they physically in the building? They are. Uh, they have an office downstairs. It's not on our floor, uh, but a lot of them, you know, are have vehicles, vehicle offices, right? Yeah, and they're out in the field just like our inspectors are. There's an office uh, downstairs they have. Okay. Would the state inspectors ever assist code of compliance people, or they don't have code of compliance? Either. Yeah, state. Uh, well, the state's working I mean, on their code the compliance. The only time we get with the state sometimes is with licensing, right? Yeah, and that's yeah, the only that's, thing. Yeah. That's the only thing the state will help us out with is if we've got somebody working without a license or we're doing work without the proper licensing. Sure. Then we can give it. We give the information to the state. Usually they'll take it, run with it, and help out on that end. But they won't help us out for like work without permits, anything like that. They won't touch it for us, um, just because they don't have enough bodies to do them their own work yeah. so they don't have the bodies to help us do ours too sure but because licensing is all done under the state's umbrella they will help out with that so so yeah so we'll get a recommendation i think i mean what they say february maybe march we might maybe about that time frame that we'll get a recommendation from this company on what we could do. And so I assume we would be having board meetings then to say, hey, here's kind of the proposals for the, these fee schedules. Kind of get your input on that. But in the meantime, if you want to look at them and let Chatter I know now, but if, hey, bring this up. You know, here's a recommendation or here's a comment. We're, mm -hmm. we're definitely taking any comments at this point on our fee yeah. schedules. So it'd be great if you work them over. And like Chad said, it's just a residential. Down further. Keep going. 
Mm -hmm. Numa, right there, number four, where it says new multifamily projects have some giant commercial uses. That's the one I want to change to just one permit instead of two permits. You know, I don't want to have to permit them separately. So that was originally set up because the, the, um, this is the commercial portions, which is the common areas, mm -hmm. are falling under the commercial. Mm -hmm. The dwelling is residential. Will the code application change? Will it no. all be now commercial? It's multifamily it's commercial so all, anyway. all commercial all the way across. Yep. Okay. Yep. Unless you're three stories or less above grade plane. Well, that's single family duplex. So yeah, no, it's all commercial anyway. Okay. Yep. So it wouldn't change anything with the codes. It would just change how we permit them. We'd permit them like every other commercial project, basically. Sure. Okay. Damn it, Chad. Why'd you make that change that way? <laughs> it was that way before I was in the seat. <laughs> I couldn't tell you why it is that way. <laughs> and so you could have something similar to this, maybe a different chart, different rates for multifamily or something, yep. right? Yeah. Sure. Yep. And that's easy to work with right there. That I, that's an easy schedule. Yeah. Makes it easy. Yep. Well, I've heard complaints too about counting up all the number of fixtures too, right? From some people. Well, if you got 300 oh, along apartments. The yeah. apartment, yeah. If you got apartment. 300 unit apartment and then you're counting every plumbing fixture you have to try and figure out your fees, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pain. Well, and then the inspector doesn't have to verify that same number either. Yeah. yeah. Anything else on the schedule? Mm -mm. Okay. So those are basically my changes. Hey, hold it right there just for a second. There is a special investigation fee or additional reviews or, ins uh, or inspections. Yes. Do you want me to explain these? Or well, are they going to maybe go right along with a little bit more than? non-compliant stuff also is that yeah so special investigation fee is the is the work without permit fee so if we do catch people then we double the fee it's what we call kind of the double fee they call it a special investigation fee what's 100 percent of what the regular fee is okay. so if we catch them doing work without permit we'll issue we'll mandate a double fee so instead of 55 dollars permit they got to be 110 dollars or if it was a thousand dollar commercial fee now it's two thousand dollar Hey, and and one recommendation, and they're going to make all these things like this standard across for all our trades, whatever the hourly is, whatever these fees are. But one thing is the reinspection fee. They did talk about doing a tiered reinspection fee. Yeah, it starts out at start one. at this, maybe sure. double, maybe triple. Sure. Yeah, you know, just as a more of a because we a get, level stupid tax. Yeah, we get yeah sometimes. <laughs> We get called out there and it's like in the morning and they're not ready. And then yeah. they go back in the afternoon, they're still not ready. And then it's the next day. And it's like, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now we don't yeah. mind going out if it's a conference or we need to, you know, do an advice or, you know, you know, well, talk yeah. through an issue or something. But sometimes we just get called out and they're just not ready. And I keep calling, calling, calling. Then they're not ready. So it's like, right. we can't keep coming out here. <laughs> or we keep failing them for the same thing. Every single job we go to, we fail them for the same thing constantly. Sure. And so um, we've got a couple of contractors that just, you know, at one point you're losing money, you're losing time, you're losing. Because they just don't want to do it right. And this is this fee here is just if you do a refund and our permit techs have to spend a, a lot of time on they just usually charge an administrative fee to they've got to do a bunch of research. Okay. It's an easy, straightforward one, they don't charge it, but it's the bigger ones. Like again, a multifamily, they gotta do a big refund and dig up a bunch of information. And the other place you'll see that clerical fee is if we reopen a permit that's been expired. Mm. Sometimes we'll charge an admin fee for that. Then we have the after hours should be don't happen a lot, but it was eighty three per hour minimum two hours just to cover. That would be like a Saturday to get it more on fire alarm parts. Mm -hmm. I'd say. Yeah. You know, Once in a while at the airport, the, the yeah. airport's got special stuff that they got to do outside of flight hours and stuff like that. Okay. Refrigeration piping. 
Yeah, I don't anticipate any changes there. Um, structure wise, fee structure wise, I don't know what the recommendations will be outside of that. Well, I mean, it's pretty much similar. Yeah, the fees are set up structured identical. I think the only difference is you don't have refrigeration fees on plumbing, is the only difference. Square footage for single family. Yep. Probably add an ADU in here. Yeah, I anticipate adding an ADU. Does plumbing have the same multifamily? Yes, it does. We've got the same the issue with multifamily, right? Yeah. Yep, yeah, item before there again. Yeah. Yeah, any take a review at it, familiarize yourself with it. They're out there online. And, you know, they're in our system when you're getting permits, right? So yeah. Any comments, suggestions, let us know. Okay. I do know one of the things that the city's working on, and I don't think it's built yet, but they're trying to build a fee calculator too to help us figure out permit fees through a fee calculator. Some of the other jurisdictions have that. We do not currently, so they're working on it. That's if somebody's bidding a job and wants to get that yeah. value. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other items or new business? Topics or items anybody wanted to bring up or anything to revisit or feature? Um, I just wanted to kind of make sure I understand this group and how, how this works. So you guys are representing the, the city. Mm -hmm. um, you're technically not on the board, is that correct? Correct. So um, you will typically bring up the issues that are coming in from the city. Mm -hmm. We figure out discussions or whatever, but like in this case, you actually brought documents that have been prepared. Mm -hmm. This is what we want to do. Is that pretty standard? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Usually but, that's when we have our, sorry, Jason. Yeah, usually mm -hmm. we have, was when we schedule a meeting is when we got documents to pre prepare to show you guys and get your guys' opinion because you're our industry. But if you have issues that are going on, you want to request a board meeting to discuss an issue, we can schedule for that too. Okay, so who who does have the authority to call a meeting? A pub, anybody from the public saying, hey, I want to talk about this? It How would usually goes to the chair to request to us to set it all up. Okay. I mean, you can call us too and we can. But the majority of the time will be assembled because you guys are bringing something up. Yeah. Okay. I just want to get my mind wrapped right. around that whole thing. And it could be an appeal too, right? If yeah. Okay. If Chad or plumbing inspectors gets challenged on a call where we just can't work it out and they want to appeal it, it's going to come to this board. So they, mm -hmm. they would present their case. City would present their case. They would re present their side. And there's some rebuttals and you guys would help make the decision. Can't waive code. Um, Got to uphold the code, but you can consider other equivalent alternatives. Okay. Right but yeah, it's usually ordinance changes, fees. Maybe if we have a big policy change, um, and then appeals, basically. Mm -hmm. But if there is like an issue going on in the field that seems to be covering a lot of different contractors where we need to bubble it up or talk about it, we certainly could do a meeting for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would probably like to figure out what's going to happen with after the January 1st with the refrigerant change. And, you all? Yeah, and yeah. how we're going to enforce some of those long line refrigerant lines and in walls and all of that yeah. stuff. I don't know how that's going to roll. Yeah, and so... Currently, we're under the 18 codes, and the 18 code cycle does have the A12 refrigerants in the charts and does talk about it and has some requirements there. But if the next code cycles up, the 21 and the 24, I haven't seen the 24, but I heard there's a lot of changes for the A2L refrigerants in the 24 code. Yeah. But the 21 code, almost a whole refrigeration chapter has been rewritten. Um, a lot of stuff still the same, but they added a bunch of new stuff in there, rearranged stuff. 
in the 21 code for refrigeration. They're currently under the 18. It's pretty minimal there other than they have the 12 refrigerants in there. But there's nothing in there for like sensors, stuff like that. The issue that you're talking about with running long lines, that's through multiple floors. If you get above a certain amount of that refrigerant, then you got to be in a chase or a fire rated chase. But if you're under that threshold, you don't have to be in a chase. But a gas line doesn't need to be. But a gas line does not. Okay. That makes sense. And a gas line is more flammable than an A2L refrigerant. So. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, I wish logic would come into play. Right. Okay. Well, and the other, and that's thing. something that you can address at the state yeah. level too, because the state does have amendments statewide, you know, for our code. So that's a good place, you know, if you want to start with something, I you don't agree that this should be the chase, you know, that's a good place to start. Yeah, sure. that's what I was going to say too. Is the other thing is keep an eye on state too. I right? try to go to all of those state, state meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. right now is the time where they're turning in usually all the rules for next session. They usually do it right about August, September. Yeah. So that's kind of the code, the year cycle on the state for any rule changes it's after the session from usually March through August, September, they try to work on hearings and changes and get them in. So they get to the legislature in January. Right. The only thing that makes sense is if you got a building on fire and firemen come in, they turn the gas off. So that's done, but the refrigerant, you can't go in. I don't know, because it does seem weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there any big state changes coming? No, there's nothing on the mechanical and plumbing side that they're going to run through legislation except for that temporary licensure rule <laughs> that the governor signed as an emergency clause. They're probably going to run a, a more permanent rule. I didn't hear it. He did sign it. Yeah. Okay. Yep, and they as he signed it the way it was written from the board, the way the board revised it and sent it back. So they removed the just the journeyman license, you know. So and that had to do with I'm not sure if all of you are familiar with it or not, but um a lot bringing in out of state on the mechanical side, HVAC journeyman coming from out of state to help out on some of these bigger projects. Um the union and Micron got together and petitioned the governor's office to try and find a little easier way for HVAC journeymen to come into Idaho and be able to work in Idaho. So, if Idaho doesn't reciprocate the um, journeyman requirements to any other state, so anything coming Montana, in, right? Huh? Montana, I believe, no, not, no, for, no, not, no, for, not, not for not for HVAC. Oh, okay, so they'd have to go through the school, take the test, yep. and all of that. So they said if you if you met the requirements that the union states get you there, then we'll basically reciprocate just that. Yeah. Yep. And then you have to take a test. You still have to pay for your license and stuff, but you don't have to take the journeyman's test in Idaho. They'll accept the test that you took to get that licensure. You said that's a permanent thing or was that? Um, a it's a temporary term? rule right now, but sure. I, I, I've heard it's been rumored that they're going to probably try and make it a permanent rule in legislation next year. Are they doing the same thing on plumbing too? They didn't. I didn't hear anything talked about on plumbing with it. So the plumbing mm -hmm. side must already have some sort of reciprocating. Well, we've got a lot of states that we match up to, like neighboring so, ones. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, because the way it was currently written for HVAC, you had to, if you were a journeyman coming from another state, you had to prove. F so many hours, 16,000 hours of work in the field, and then you still had to take the journeyman's test. Mm -hmm. Well, some of these projects like Micron, they're talking about bringing in 2,500 workers, and the state can issue 25 tests, 2,500 <laughs> tests in a timely, bad, timely amount. Of, so it's so they're trying to figure out how to make it easier. So, mm -hmm. But I do know, because I researched it, in the two certifications that they approved being able to have without taking a, the Idaho test as is more stringent, requires more hours and more schooling than what Idaho currently requires. Hmm. So hmm. that was one of my fears. Are we making it easier for them to go come from say Nevada sure. yeah. over here and their schooling only requires a year or something or two thousand mm -hmm. hours or something like that. But no, it's they're they're harder, more stringent rules than what ours is. In your non compliance booklets better get thick. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I voice my opinion there with, um, again, the state, very similar to the, to the city, does not have 
a compliance side that with any teeth at all. And they're they're understaffed significantly. Yeah, yeah. And then they had just opened, I considered open the, the door or loosened the reins on being able to be a mechanical or plumbing or an electrical contractor. You just have to have a name and a journeyman working for you. Yeah. So now you've allowed a bunch of outside people coming in, getting the journeyman card. Potentially, we have a lot more companies coming up out of the ground. So um, I don't know. I voiced my opinion. Yeah. But it's all they need to either tighten that up, which they just loosened it up, or do exactly what we're trying to do here. And then let's get the teeth out there so that when people are not complying and doing it deliberately, let's stop it. Was my thought. Yeah. So. No, de definitely stay involved with what goes on in the state for sure. Yeah. It's, it's good to know. And the state does have a plumbing board meeting next Thursday on the 5th. And they do appreciate comment. Yeah. So. <clears throat> okay. Anything else to bring up? Or? So, make a motion to close the meeting, adjourn the meeting. Second. Someone he can't push <laughs> no. the chair, right? Oh, I was waiting for Andrew to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> um, motion to close the meeting and motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Right. Motion to adjourn. All right. Second that. Okay. All right. Andrew, first motion. And second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All opposed? Thank all you right. very much. We appreciate your time and all your time. Thank you. Thank you. You want to keep these for the next meetings? Thanks, all. Thank you all.